Hello everyone, uh, we are Team 26 and we will be presenting our analysis and synthesis of a slider crank and four bar mechanism. My name is Luis Rojas. I'm Marco Diaz. And I'm Daniel Palas. What are mechanisms? An a mechanism is an assortment of linkages and joints orchestrated to perform a certain task. These joints and linkages vary in shape and sizes and greatly define the behavior of the whole system. This mechanism, these mechanisms are categorized using Grashoff's rule, which uh, compares the longest and shortest link versus the other two links, and if it satisfies, and if it satisfies the inequality, the inequality it is categorized as a type one mechanism. These concepts of uh, mechanisms date back to Greek times, and um, they gained popular popularity during the 1500s. One of the first implementations was by James Watt to convert linear motion from uh, seam engines to rotational motion. The, uh, an example of a primitive four-bar mechanism is a pantograph. It allows us to draw a small picture and onto a larger plane. Um, an example of modern mechanisms, uh, robotics is a primary field for four-bar and slider crank mechanisms. They are used to perform precise and delicate procedures that humans are incapable of doing. Uh, the grouping mechanism is a common example for a four-bar mechanism. Another example is that they are used in heavy machinery and construction equipment such as backhoes, but they are also not limited to environments such as uh, those governed by programming. Let's talk about uh, our project uh, first. Uh, part is the slider crack mechanism. The slider crack mechanism uh, converts rotational energy into linear motion. Uh, it's not physically required for links to perform. Uh, it undergoes two closures during its full motion, and all joints and kinematic analysis uh, were performed for the for the project. These are the graphs. The uh, Displacements, displacements of the joints. Uh, we have here closure one. Uh, have all together all the all the uh, joints. As we can see, um, they all vary between uh, ten and, and thirty-five uh, degrees or inches, dependent. R one is moving in a linear motion, uh, so it, it is measuring inches. We have the displacements of closure two. Uh, for R1 and uh, also the angular displacement for for R2 and uh, R and in R B versus R3 and the and the extension of the link. Uh, this uh, is the trajectory of point S. We were asked to uh, find the trajectory. So as you can see, it makes a, makes an oval shape. Uh, this is because we chose a small angle between the uh, R3 link and the Q and the extension link. It's only 10 degrees, so that's why it has a, a narrow motion like that. Uh, next we have the velocities and accelerations. Um, the acceleration and velocity of uh, R3, and which is the copper, the copper joint, and the extension are the same. The velocity and the accelerations, that's why we see this line on top of the other one. And uh, we have the accelerations and velocities of uh, the, the uh, R1, which is an imaginary link, which moves forward and backwards. Uh, this is for the uh, closure one. So they move in a positive uh, direction, in the X direction. And uh, as we can see here, the velocity of, uh, is this line right here? Um, the velocity of, of R2, is constant, is set to uh, 3 radians per second, and acceleration here is 0 for, for R2. Uh, so the application of the mechanism, uh, we are going to implement this uh, slider crank mechanism as a two-part epoxy applicator. Uh, it's going to be uh, using the extension of the coupler to link a second slider, uh, which will have another uh, another piston to, to dis dispense the, uh, the, the glue, uh, to mix it together. So uh, it will be uh, the epoxy and the activator uh, to be like installed in a man manufacturing line. 
This is how it will look, the uh, machine. So we can see we have uh, two lines coming, uh, suction, suction the, uh, the, the epoxy, and then once it moves, you will we'll see a video, and then it will you know, display like that. We can see a little bit how it will be installed. For part two of the project, we were given three specific points uh, for both A and B. Uh, these are locations on the coupler link. We were to synthesize the motion of this four bar mechanism. Uh, as you can see, these are the points that we were given. Uh, with these points, we determined A0 and B0. These are the initial or the fixed joints for the four bar mechanism. Uh, in order to perform our validation, we use SOLIDWORKS. We did this by actually rotating the mechanism uh, a full 360 degrees. And in doing so, we also, with uh, Excel spreadsheets, we also were able to determine that B3 was in fact not working for our mechanism. Therefore, we changed our B3 coordinate to 10.65 in the X direction and 5.97 in the Y direction. Now, this is based on the corresponding A3 coordinate. We did this by verifying where A3 was located and it was in fact located where it was supposed to and we then compared where it was with respect to time. After doing so, we then uh, looked on the we looked on the Excel file and determined where B3 was located based on the same time step. And here you can see an animation of it moving. And with the Excel graph, we were also able to determine that B3 in this case, the original B3, was an outlier. And that is why we chose uh, point 10.65 and 5.97 as the new B3 coordinate. application of the synthesized mechanism. We chose a high-speed shearing device for cutting. Now this high-speed shearing device could be applicable to both uh, the poultry industry, meat industry, and as well as all metal industries. Now when I say this, I mean this is typically used for extruded metal or any circular device. Now the reason why I say it could have been used in the meat or poultry industry for any type of extrusions in a circular shape, it would have worked just as fine. Uh, this is ideal for mass production of uh, circular stock, and the feed rate and the cutting rate would then determine the actual length of the cut stock. Now this would have to be done in a very synchronized fashion in order to maintain a consistent length without any error. In conclusion, we have determined that four bar and slider crank mechanisms obtain irregular motions through a very specialized joint and linkage arrangement. We have also determined that mechanisms are not limited to the robotics industry as many may believe. Some of the pros with these mechanisms is that they are capable of performing very useful tasks with a seemingly simple design. However, some of the cons with the more complex task comes a more complex design. If the design is ex extremely complex, the use of mechanisms alone is not feasible. Other technologies will be required. And this must always be taken into consideration when performing an analysis or designing any future mechanism. Thank you very much for your time. And that is all.